This is Charles Langley. I'm here with Nina Babiars. She's going to occupy my chair after I speak. And then our subject matter expert, Paul Blanche, will speak. Okay, so there are three of you speaking on behalf of your group. Yes. And you'll consume six minutes total with two minutes each? I will be less than a minute. It may take our subject matter expert a little bit longer, but we intend to be very brief. All right, this is how we'll proceed. You're representing three speakers, representing one group. Yes. Okay, and you will have no more than... Um, six minutes. Uh, six minutes for the three of you, okay? Please proceed. All right, thank you. I'm Charles Langley with Public Watchdogs. I'm here today with Nina Babiars and our subject matter expert, Paul Blanche. We will speak in that order. Uh, next slide, please. We are here to request a no vote or a delay of the vote. Next slide, please. Songs is vulnerable to flooding. It is operating in what the NRC calls an unanalyzed condition in violation of NRC rules. The whole tech flooding analysis has been kept secret by the NRC. The public has a right to know what it says. Next slide, please. Songs is located in a floodplain surrounded by mountains. In 2010, the Mesa Access Road was flooded twice by rain, making it impossible for emergency vehicles to access songs. Next slide, please. This NRC Edison document shows that the ISFACI is completely submerged by flooding. Next slide, please. This map shows a tsunami zone with the ISFACI in the center of it. And now I will Move to the next slide, and Nina Babiars will occupy my chair and speak next. Good morning. My name is Nina Babiars with Public Watchdogs. I appreciate the opportunity to bring to your attention the inaccurate information that was used in the LPI report. Whenever this IP, IMP is approved, we're going to be living with this Edison IMP for decades, if not hundreds of years. So when you take action this morning, please think of your sons, daughters, grandchildren, and future generations. In the first bullet, you'll see the reason that the miscalculations and typo errors are in scare quotes is actually quite scary. LPI uh, used these terms in their fourth recommendation. Public watchdogs contends garbage in, garbage out. Edison has invalidated LPI's recommendation and resulting conclusions by providing the consultant bad information. Miscalculated information specific to the gouging of the cans that's already occurred in the downloading process is connected to the hip of many other issues in this IMP. Please delay or, or no vote this resolution today in order for the California Coastal Commission staff and the public to further scrutinize the facts used to develop this IMP. Chair Padilla, I have a COVID slide at the end of our presentation after Mr. Blanche. I respectfully request a balance of my time used to present it because it's relevant to the IMP. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, can, you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Uh, good afternoon from the East Coast. My name is Paul Blanche. Uh, I am a professional engineer, state of California, with more than 50 years of nuclear experience. The issue I'm going to be discussing is not a new issue, at least the Southern Cal Edison or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We have tried and are in the process of addressing these issues with the NRC in a petition that was filed initially on February 4th. We have a supplement to the petition that is available that provides the details of our concerns. The flooding of the IFACI is an unanalyzed condition based on false information provided to by Southern Cal Edison to the Coastal Commission through LPI, and also false information to the public and the NRC. The situation I'm describing is not an if situation, it's a when situation. Flooding will occur. 
when flooding occurs, all cooling will be lost to all 72, 73 canisters due to stagnant water and hundreds of pounds of salt blocking all cooling from every canister. This will be an environmental and radiological disaster and will likely result with 72 canisters producing a radioactive fog over the site. We look at the recovery procedure discussed in Edison's documents and documents filed with the NRC. Recovery is impossible. Maybe recovery for one canister is possible. However, the recovery of all canisters is impossible. We have 32 hours, according to Holtec, to do this. We have provided details of our concerns in a formal 10 CFR 2.206 petition to the NRC yesterday, which demands and requests an analysis. We request the commission to postpone any decision until the NRC resolves this major ecological and radiological issue. Thank you, commissioners and members for your time. Proceed to the last slide, please, in this presentation. Thank you. The last slide on COVID, please. We're requesting the last slide on COVID, please. Whether it's a Delmore racetrack or a restaurant serving the public, when workers test positive for the COVID, work stops. Song's workers were tested positive July 1st, and yet the work continues. Edison has had multiple and repeated requests from public watchdogs, a U.S. Congressman Levin, San Diego County Supervisor, and Edison CEP meter member Jim Desmond, only to receive terse and unapologetic responses from Edison that they will not stop the work regardless. And Whether it's steam generators, leaking radiation, concealment of downloading accidents, or ignoring when a song worker tested positive for COVID-19, this is the Edison corporate culture. And it is this arrogant corporate culture that has developed a flawed and inaccurate IMP. Ma'am, your time has run out. The Coastal Commission doesn't have jurisdiction over a lot of things, but you have Thank jurisdiction. Thank you, ma'am. Your time has expired, Miss Langley. Thank you.